If you watched the first few episodes of Ironheart that dropped a couple nights ago, then you saw something that perfectly captures what everyone wants from AI. In this show, Riri Williams scans her brain to create her personalized AI named Natalie. And the AI looks, sounds, thinks, and remembers exactly like her best friend that passed away years ago. We want an AI system that feels like it's known us for years. But in order to have that type of AI, it's going to need a very good memory. Think about how your memory works with your friends. You don't think through every single small detail that you know about them and look for relevant information to include in the current conversation. Your brain has a built-in filtering system that automatically pulls to the forefront the things that are relevant right now and disregards everything else. And it's this complex system that our brains have that allows a surgeon to remember a procedure from 2005 or a psychologist to remember a certain case from 2010. And it even allows you to recall memories from years ago with a photographic memory to provide context to your everyday life. Because the further we go and the more memories we create inside the age of AI, the higher the demand is going to be The AI is able to remember all of these things. And I do believe that eventually the platforms will get there, but they're not quite there yet. I don't know, it may take them two or three years, but what I'm about to show you is going to give you that level of accuracy and recall today. So that when you're having your conversations with ChatGPT, it feels like you're talking to your Natalie, or it feels like you're talking to your best friend, or if you're using ChatGPT for professional reasons, it's going to give you that granular, accurate insight that you need from the conversations that you're having with it. Now, credit where credit is due, and I think that this is why OpenAI is the leading AI platform, because no platform is giving you the level of customization that ChatGPT does. If you go in your settings, you'll find that they allow you to customize ChatGPT with whatever traits that you want it to have. And they also give you another 1,500 characters to share important details about who you are so that ChatGPT can further personalize your experience. And with their latest update, ChatGPT can now reference all of your chats to bring in relevant context. And this is great in theory, but in practice, it's not exactly what we're looking for. Basically what ChatGPT does is it uses a semantic index, and that's just a fancy word for search snippets. So it runs through your old chats and it pulls up a couple of relevant lines or hopefully relevant lines because we all know that sometimes it brings information into the conversation that's not contextually accurate or contextually relevant. Another problem is you don't know exactly where it's gathering the information from past conversations so you have no way to verify or even correct it. And even though you have this feature inside of ChatGPT projects, the longer or bigger that project gets, the less ChatGPT is going to index or pull from those older memories. So reference chat history is good to some degree, but overall ChatGPT is still making an educated guess about which chats and which memories and facts to bring into the current conversation. And it's hit or miss right now. But the second kind of memory that we get with ChatGPT is far superior in its native memory. These are several dozen facts that ChatGPT saves in extensive detail while it's having conversations with you. you can can either tell ChatGPT to remember certain things, but many times it'll take it upon itself to just save important facts that it discovers about you. These are great because it allows ChatGPT to remember specific things about you if the memory is saved accurately the first time, because sometimes it will create a memory on its own. But even with these memories, there's a limit to them, and you'll find that your memories often fill up within a couple of days. And they're also global across the entire account so they can show up inside any conversation. So these are absolutely great, but they don't have the skill that people want right now and they're not project specific. And so one way we might be able to do this is if we were able to build our memory database somewhere and then connect ChatGPT to it through connectors. And so we might have a memory database inside of Box, Dropbox, or our Google Drive, which are all apps that are supported by ChatGPT connectors. But the problem with this approach is that it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's not going to give us that persistent, highly accurate, highly relevant memory that we get with the native ChatGPT memory experience. Don't get me wrong, it's a great function and I use it, but it doesn't move the needle nearly enough when it comes to creating a personalized AI. 
because this is still no better than ChatGPT searching through chat history. And of course, you can tell ChatGPT to pull up a specific Google Doc. But wouldn't you rather have a memory where your friend is having a conversation with you and they just intuitively understand? that this Google Doc is relevant for this conversation. And I know that my friend isn't thinking about this, but this is also relevant as well. They've forgotten about it because it happened three years ago, but I have a perfect memory and I'm gonna remind them about it now. That's so much better than what they're doing with connectors. Then I know that some people are thinking, well, if ChatGPT connectors aren't it, maybe model context protocol is, and there are some very creative use cases for it. Most people who use ChatGPT are not tech literate, or they don't want to go through the hassle of trying to learn how to set up this complicated workflow just so they could get a better experience with their ChatGPT account. And so they want something simple that's not going to give them a headache or take up their entire weekend learning about things they've never heard of before. Model context protocol may be a great solution for you. If you're tech savvy, you have the resources to set everything up and keep your data safe. But for most chat GPT users, they're going to want something a little bit simpler. Let's look at my method. That's going to give you full control over what chat GPT remembers and create the most personalized experience that you could possibly have with any AI right now. So now let's get to work. The first thing you want to do is set up a chat GPT project. The reason we're using projects is because projects are the only place inside chat GPT where you can upload a file, have multiple conversations and store all of those conversations in a single workplace that keeps the information and data there kind of siloed or separated from the rest of the account. But some of you may already have projects set up and you want to use this method. Don't worry. It's super easy. So what you want to do is if you just created a project, then start your conversation as normal. And if you already have a project that you want to use this method on, then go to that project and go to the very end of the conversation. And then you're going to paste in the memory extractor prompt. I'll put a link in the description where you can get a copy of the walkthrough that will have all of the prompts. But what this is going to do is go through your conversation and it's going to format the data from that conversation in a file name type called JSON lines. A lot of people are talking about JSON files right now because they're they're great not only for storing images as descriptive objects, but Claude is even using it to upgrade native memory inside of their platform. But there's one thing that holds JSON back from being the optimal file type for us. And that's the fact that it's a single object, meaning JSON is like a book written on a scroll. So if Claude or ChatGPT or any other system wants to find relevant information to contextualize its response, it has to read the entire scroll and look for that information. Whereas JSON lines formats information by writing it on pages. So each line is its own page. So all the technical jargon aside, there are two things that stand out about this file format that I want to share with you. Number one, it gives our memory database a structure so that it's able to scale over the years. And number two, it's not resource intensive on the system. So ChatGPT can turn page to page and it only needs the memory to read that one line instead of trying to use its memory to read the full object at a single moment. So that's definitely going to improve performance with ChatGPT. And one more important thing that I'll mention that you're going to be happy to know is that that this prompt and the prompt that I'm going to give you in a minute, they're not just going to format your data in pages instead of a book, but they're also going to give that book a table of contents and an index with chapters, paragraphs, and paragraph numbers so that ChatGPT can quickly and easily find the most relevant information that it needs for you so that you can have a more personalized AI experience. So now that we have this file, and don't worry, your version of the prompt will not look like this. It's supposed to just create the downloadable file, but it's also important that you understand what it looks like on the inside, and I'll explain why in the moment, but now I'm gonna rerun the prompt and I'm gonna tell it to give me a downloadable file. And so right now, if we look at the analyzation that chat GPT is doing it's reading through the entire conversation and it's cataloging everything according to date time Q&A link and other things that I've put together for and all you want to do is download this file the next thing you want to do is go to the relevant project and I'm just going to create a project titled Bible study create the project and then I come right here to add files and then I'm going to drag this file in and close it and now whenever I go inside of this Bible study project and I have a conversation, 
ChatGPT is going to have this file of all of the insights that I gained from studying the Bible at this time. And remember, you can do this with any type of project in any kind of memory. So now what happens, Corey, tomorrow when I want to update my memory and there's something else that I want to add to make this file larger? Do I just download another file and upload it here? Well, you could do that, but the problem is you have a limit on 20 files, but the limit of a single file is so much greater. Now, just to keep this simple, you want to keep each of these files to 50,000 words or less. And that is a lot of words. And once you fill up the first memory file, when it gets to around 50,000 words, you stop updating it because beyond that size is where ChatGPT typically begins to struggle with files. Even though they say that you can upload larger files, I don't recommend it. But if you want to update the file, all you do is go back to that project or go to any conversation, paste in the memory extractor prompt, which is going to give you another downloadable file. But this time you're going to open said file. And in order to open it, you're going to need an app like Sublime Text. Now that you have your file for the second day open, select everything by pressing Command A or Control A on Windows, copy it, go to your original memory file, place the cursor on a new line, paste and then save it. And this time I recommend giving it a similar name that you already have for your primary memory file, but adding the date on the end like I did here, June 25th, 2025, then come back to ChatGPT, click on your project files, delete the old one, click add files, upload your new file, and then close it out. And this is something that depending on your personal workflow and how you're using this project or how frequently you're using it, you would do at the end of the day and then just save your downloaded files. And then maybe one Friday evening, you consolidate all of them. And if you choose to take that route instead of doing it on a daily basis, I suggest that you set up a scheduled task that will remind you to do it and you must make certain that you are faithful in doing it so that you don't miss any saved memories. But even though we're taking all of our conversations and we're processing them with this prompt and we're formatting those conversations so that they have date and time stamps, so that they have special tags that let ChatGPT know whether it's a question and answer, a follow-up, an insight, an observation, whether we have it labeled as an entity. And even though we have it formatted in one of the best file formats for an AI system to quickly read through data, we still need one more piece to make certain that we can activate this system. So now that you understand how to create memories and you understand how to update memories, which is essentially the same thing you did in the first step, just opening the file and copying and pasting it into the original file. Now you want to make certain that every time you have a conversation in this project, ChatGPT understands how to use that file that you've uploaded. So open your instructions and then paste in this prompt on every user message. And I'll be upfront with you. Sometimes you have to play around with this instruction to make ChatGPT go to that file and reference that file, but just use this to start off with and then try to use stronger language. I'll probably have a different prompt than this in there once I find one I feel like works perfectly, but you wanna be very straightforward and direct with ChatGPT. On every user message, detect key topics or tags. Search memory master JSON L for objects with two or more overlapping tags or one exact tag plus same week date. Surface up to six new matches verbatim, include date time if helpful. If no match, respond normally and invite the user to log new info. Accuracy beats speculation. And so what we need to do in this particular situation is either change the name of the file we uploaded or change the name of the instructions to match the file that we uploaded. So I'm just gonna delete this for now. I'm going to click save. I'll take a quick look at the file so I can remember the name of it. See if I can copy it by highlighting. I can't. So Bible study 625 2025. Got it. So we're going to come back in here and right here with search. We're going to say Bible study 625 2025 dot Jason L and then click save. And then I'm just going to go in here and start a new chat. What does Hebrews 927 mean? And so if you look right here, you can see that it's parsing the JSON line for relevant matches. And so it found some files and now it's looking through those. 
And so when we scroll down, we can see that it actually extracted this particular line from our memories. So in the future, as your memory grows, you'll be able to see the date time. This was from June 25th because we just ran the prompt. Now, ChatGPT could have absolutely answered this question about the Bible without the file that I uploaded, but I wanted to give you a quick demo and let you see how it works on a small scale. Now, just imagine how this operates when you have extensive life memories and you don't want to lose any of them or you want to use them within the context of ChatGPT. And I'll be putting out a video soon that I'll put right here where I'm showing you seven of the craziest use cases that I've looked at for using this type of memory system that you can build on your own and update every day with just a couple minutes of your time. And it's not gonna cost you anything extra than those couple of minutes of your time. But if you got value out of this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any of the advanced AI strategies like this one. And as always, take care, have a great day, and I'll see you in this next video once I get it done. And remember, if you want a step-by-step -step walkthrough as well as copies of the prompts that I use, click the link in the description, fill out the form, and I'll send it right over.